Hi, I'm Simon from Ridge Monkey, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to make a really simple little steak and potato pie. We're going to finish it with some mushy peas, and it's all going to be made in our XL compact pan. Now, let me take you through the ingredients that we've got. I've got some ready rolled short crust pastry. You could use puff pastry if you wanted, but I've got short crust for today. Now, I've actually got a tin of ready stewed steak uh, pie mix. You don't have to make it yourself every time quite acceptable to use these. We've got some tin potatoes. Now, obviously these are ready cooked, so we're just gonna slice these up and add that to it into the pastry. We're gonna finish it off. We've got some tin mushy peas. So let me show you how to start making it. Right guys, so as I said, I've got some short crust pastry. Bought this from a local supermarket. It is ready rolled. So it comes in a sheet like this. No need to faff around rolling it out. It comes with a nice little bit of backing on there as well. Really easy to pull apart. Now, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna mold this pie. So the first thing that we're gonna do, is just roll that back up. We're gonna get our pan. We're gonna break it in half. We're gonna put the two sides together like this. And what we wanna be doing, we're gonna open up this sheet of pastry and we're gonna lay that pastry over the one side of the pan. Now you can see there, we've left the lip all the way around but that is molded into the base of the one pan. Okay, so you can see that, really simple to do. Next, we're gonna be getting our tin of pie filling. Okay, so really anything that you can, uh, you can put into these. Now the pie fillings that you can buy ready-made, they do beef ones, they'll do chicken in a white sauce, chicken and mushroom. Uh, you can quite happily make your own. Um, coming from, you know, around the Midlands area, one of the biggest things that we end up having up our way is a balsy pie. So we'll, uh, we'll actually put a nice little bit of curry into a pie and cook it that way. So really, really simple. Uh, as I said, we're going to put potatoes in there. So we're just going to take some of these new potatoes, get a little knife and just cut them up. They don't have to be even, they don't have to be anything special. We're just going to cut those and get them into there. Now the reason that I'm doing it this way is so it can all be cooked in one pan. You've got your potatoes and the meat in the pie, then we're going to finish that off. We're just going to unclip the two sections of the pan like we have there, put in some mushy peas and you've got a meal fit for a king ready to go. So there you can see I've got the potatoes, I've got the filling inside the pastry. Just going to top it off. Now I like mine quite peppery. So we're just going to finish it off with a nice little bit of black pepper on the inside. Now I always tend to carry these with me. A little bit of salt. Now these are all optional guys, you don't have to put these in. Uh, but this one is a game changer for me on the bank, a little garlic grinder. I love the taste of garlic in a lot of the food that I cook and having one of these with me is great for seasoning food. So these I always tend to keep in my cook bag. Now, i move those out of the way so you can see what we're doing. Now, there you go, we've got the pastry, we've got the pie filling. All we're gonna do now is bring that back and over. Now you can see, there you go, that fills that pan beautifully, but we've got these edges left over. So all we're gonna do, I'll show you really simply, is crimp them like you would with a Cornish pasty. So just by twisting and bringing those round, that is actually gonna seal. So as that cooks, it's gonna seal all of that moisture, all of that filling inside that pastry. And there you go, press that down. And there is our pie. So you can see that ready done. All we need to do now is turn the stove on. We're gonna put the two sides back together and then we're gonna cook it over a low heat. And we're gonna keep turning that so the pastry cooks evenly. Stove's on, all that's left to do is cook this. So we're gonna connect the pan back up, put the two sides back on, just like that. And get that onto the stove. This will be enough for a couple of you or one of you if you're really hungry and just wanna lounge on your bed for the rest of the day. Right guys, so this is gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. I'm not gonna to lie to you, it's not gonna be as quick as a Chicago Town pizza, a Rustler's burger, or a pot noodle, but it's gonna be a lot more satisfying for you on the bank. Remember my hashtag, eat well, fish well. Right, this has now been cooking for about four minutes, so we're gonna open it up, we'll have a look, we're gonna flip it over in a second and see, but it's already been flipped 
it once, you can see we're starting to get a nice little bit of coloration. That pastry's starting to cook there. So it's time to put that back onto there. There you go, yep, yeah, look at that. So that pastry's starting to puff up as well. You've got that coloration starting, it's starting to firm up around the side. Now that filling's gonna be heating through as well from that heat. Remember, we've only got this on a low heat for that reason, so it's gonna cook through beautifully. Now this is gonna be the best Greg steak bake you're ever gonna eat. So where that pastry is cooking, you can really smell that cooking through now. You've got that nice little butteriness. We've used a butter short crust pastry. You can smell the filling starting to cook through. You've got the, uh, the beef and that red wine gravy in there. This is absolutely gonna be stunning. Can't wait to serve this. We've got some nice little mushy peas for that to go with as well. But as I said, because the potatoes are in that dish, you've got a meal in one. Here we go guys, this has been cooking now for about 15 minutes and as you can see that pastry there, lovely, lovely and firm. You can really smell that, you can see the uh, sauce bubbling through on the inside so that filling's hot all the way through. Let's just give it a quick flick over there. There you go, look at that, that's really puffed up, that pastry's risen the whole way around. So we've got about another minute or so, that'll be finished and then we're going to start on the mushy peas and serve up. Right, there we go, so this pie is ready. What we're going to do, we're just going to flick that off, get rid of that, and put this onto our plate. There we go, we'll put that on the board. Now, the next thing that we are going to do, as we said, we're going to serve it with some mushy peas. We've got a little tin of mushy peas there, using the same pan, less washing up. So our peas are on, our pie's there, but just a little word about this coating on the pans. You can see that the butter's come out of the, uh, the pastry slightly and it makes it completely non-stick. You don't have to worry about things sticking, you don't have to put some extra paper on the inside to insulate it so it doesn't stick to the pan. That's come out lovely. Now, here are our mushy peas just cooking through. The joy of being able to split that pan means that we're only using the one pan to do this. We're not actually having to have separate pans to cook everything in. Just while that pastry sat there, you know, the pie sat there, just finishing off that residual heat on the insides, just coming through, just heating up these peas. Now, as I said, this is enough for two or one of you if you're really, really hungry. Now let's talk about the other fillings while these are heating up. You know, you can buy chicken and mushroom filling, chicken in a white wine filling, minced beef and onion fillings. Uh, why not even use some of the actual fruit pie fillings and make a fruit one instead, an apple, or you get some rhubarb or the cherry pie filling, serve it with a bit of custard instead of mushy peas. Really, really simple way to do it. As I said, you can use the flaky pastry as well, the puff pastry, and that will really rise up inside these pans and give you a really, really good, deep, deep fill pie. There you go, peas are ready. All we are gonna do now, let's just get this pie. We'll split this down the middle. So these mushy peas are cooked. They're gonna give a lovely little texture to this pie now. You know, quite traditional pie liquor. So we've got some mushy peas. You can see the filling in there, the steam coming off that. So as I said, it's heated up. We didn't have to preheat that from the tin. It's all heated up while the pastry's been cooking. You've got your potatoes in there and your veg with your mushy peas. A lovely little steak, red wine potato pie cooked in a short crust pastry with some mushy peas on the side. Perfect.